I've heard it said that if you're not tuning in, you're tuning out. But don't you worry, none. You just tuned in to On Top and Hot. And I'm your host, John Zadar. This is Wednesday. It is July 12th. I'm giving you a personal invite. Come see me tomorrow, 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, right here on YouTube. I do a live streaming event every Thursday, 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, for our investors to tell me what stocks they're interested in. I'm sharing stocks with you all week. This gives you an opportunity to share with me. Me and my co-host, we'll go over the information, look at the charts, give you our opinion on it. But I got to tell you, we're only there for an hour, which sounds like a long time, but you can't look at a lot of stocks in an hour. So what I'm saying is get there early. I put up a place setting for the video about 2.30 in the afternoon, so you can actually come find it and put your ticker in there early, before 4 o'clock. It'll be waiting for me when I get there, and it'll be first in the queue for us to look at. 4 o'clock, Eastern Standard Time, Thursdays. So what do we do on this show? Well, we like to look for hot OTC and penny stocks. We're looking for stocks under 5 bucks, and it doesn't matter what market they're on. Now, when I say hot stocks, I'm not talking to stocks that got real big news or hot filings. I'm talking about stocks that have hot charts. That's where I primarily look first. I look through the charts. If I find a chart that has heat, what's heat? Well, you're looking for a breakout. The price is going through a strong SMA or a lot of volume is coming in. Or maybe you see a lot of big bounces. When you see a chart that's got heat, Go see if you can find a reason for it to keep moving or start moving. That's when you go through the press releases and the filings. And that's what I do every day for you and me. And I got three stocks to share with you today. Well, I'm eager to get this going. First ticker is XERI. This is Exerient Inc. Now, I'm liking her chart. It's a beautiful chart. It's one of those atypical breakout charts with the 200-day SMA coming down. And she is breaking through it right now with a lot of fervor. She's got some big news. She's making big deals. Now is the time to be looking at her. Xeri finished the day a little over four cents. I can see she's getting aftermarket activity. It just keeps going up. We are just now under 40% gains for the day. She is on the middle tier of the OTC. We like this. On the QB, you have to audit your financials. That means we're getting accountable numbers. We can actually see if the company's doing good or bad. Pinks, we get disclosures, no accounting. They're just numbers thrown at us. What do they mean? So being on the QB, that makes them more transparent, more trustworthy. They've also got that verified profile and transfer agent I am always harping to you about. These are important. There's a lot of validated information being represented by these green ticks. When you're trading stocks on the OTC market, you want as much validated information as you can get. So what does Xeri do? Well, it's not for lack of words. I don't have a description here, but that's a little big. So let's get something shorter and sweeter. They tell us over here that Xerian Inc. is a company dedicated to the discovery, development, and commercialization of emerging aerospace technologies, including next generation air and spacecraft, and advanced eco-friendly materials, which can be successfully integrated and commercialized for deployment across multiple industry sectors. We seek to partner with and acquire strategic interests in visionary companies that accelerate this mission. We are located at the Research Park at Florida Atlantic University in Boca Raton, Florida, adjacent to the Boca Raton Airport. How convenient. Now what's most interesting here, the catalyst, the big hot news, has absolutely zero to do with aerospace, has nothing to do with flight, but it is still hot nonetheless. So what was the relative volume around the company today? We did have a little bit of a jump going from 705,000 to 1.3 million. Share structure for Xeri. It's not bad, but it's not good. Outstanding share count is up there near 390 million. If we can trust these numbers, looks like we're at about 202 million. We've seen worse. Financials for the company. Now, I found this very interesting. There is nothing here annually, and there's nothing here quarterly. But I do not see shell risk over here, which is what you'd see if they were in business and not making money. If they're not in business, then it would be shell. In either case, something should be there because they're not making any money. However, the news we're going to read, shoot, now it makes it even more important. And lastly, let's check out those disclosures. 
We got a 10Q, their quarterly financial that came out May 23rd. They were late with that. That's what the NT10Q here says. That is saying we are not filing our 10Q on time. And that'll buy them five more days. Had they filed an NT10K saying they're going to be late on their annual report, this filing would give them 15 more days to get it in. And they made it by the skin of their teeth. And that's all we got here. So let's go take a look at that catalytic news. As I told you previously, all of their news is about one thing, and it has nothing to do with aerospace. They've created a new building material, a new product that we use here on Earth. It is called Nextboard. Nextboard is flame retardant, water, mildew, bug resistant. These are four by eight sheets. It's gonna replace plywood, MDF, MGO board. It's gonna replace drywall. I mean, this is huge, folks. Did you know that it takes an average of 125 trees to build your average 2,500 square foot home? This is excellent. Not only are we not producing carbon, but we're saving oxygen. You want more oxygen? Quit cutting down trees. So I'm gonna pick this news up back here in September because this is a huge piece of news. This came out September 6th. The company recently signed its first major letter of intent with Next New Concept for the purchase of up to $130 million worth of wall panels for a 35,000 unit residential development project in Africa, anticipated to be completed within five years. NNC has now expressed interest in acquiring additional building products through the company, including doors coated with Redicel infused paint. This is their fire retardant paint. The project between NNC and Exerent could generate more than $250 million in revenue for the company beginning this year. The next piece of news, they've trademarked this. So they've got that all locked up. The next piece of news is very, very big, folks. Exerient partners with TMF Corporation for next board test production. This is more than testing. This is arranging manufacturing. They don't have their own factory. They need someone to make this. They tell us here the company announces a manufacturing partnership to facilitate the production of the next board panels. The company, the manufacturer, says, as an experienced manufacturer of FM-approved plastic products, we are thrilled to be supporting the company's new product development. The feedstock required for the production of Nextboard fits right into our wheelhouse, and we're proud to be associated with a product that could have such far-reaching impact on the global environment. And that last piece of news tells us that they figured out a way to manufacture it. <laughs> Maybe they got the cart in front of the horse. But the bottom line is they've got a huge order, huge order that looks like it could be getting bigger. They've got a factory all set up and they figured out how to do it. So this company is going to go from making very little money to making buku bucks. That should get the chart running. Let's go take a look at that chart. Digging into our charting, we're going to use Thinkorswim. It's a free trading platform you get from TD Ameritrade. So this is ticker XERI, Exerient Inc., six-month, four-hour view. Our high bubble hit halfway through January, five and a half cents when she was well above her 200. Crushed that 200 and fell down to a low here of 1.7 cents at the end of June. Off of that low bubble, she is bouncing. She is pushing across every single SMA. She's towering over that 200 and she's flying. Volume is getting stronger. You can see it is all building up here and every single SMA is turning to cross that 200. And every one of them, as they cross, will give more power to the price, especially when the 50 day crosses the 200. That's called a golden cross, one of the strongest technicals on the charts. Oscillators are intense. Our PPO, percentage price oscillator, very much like the MACD, both of these are ripping right now. RSI is clear up at 76. Everything looks juicy on the four hour chart. 20 day, one hour view. So we hit our low bubble here of 1.7. She jumped off of that, got up here on her 200, graduated up to her 20, actually skipping the 50 and then pushing off onto her nine and she is climbing. Right now she is at a high of 4.1 cents. Oscillators, again, are incredible. Every single one of them is strong. All of them are pushing up. And our RSI is still on fire at 70.2. 
five day, five minute. It's a beautiful chart. What a beautiful chart. Low bubble in this corner, which is where you want to see it. We are at 2.4 cents. A few days later, we are double that at 4.1. She's just floating on her 50 day SMA here, climbing nice and easy. Uh oh, there's our 200 day SMA coming into the picture. Now, I have this fear that when a new SMA comes onto the board, the price wants to pay homage to it. Wherever it is, high or low, the price wants to go to it. I see it a lot. Well, there was a stock the other day, it didn't happen. And it looks like it's not gonna happen here. It should have come down sometime about now. So I think we've passed this problem up. Let's see, our oscillators are still looking sweet. We did have that drop right there, but she has gone right back to climbing. Everything looks really, really good for XERI. I would keep my eye on her. She's got everything in place now. The manufacturer, she's got a letter of intent for a lot of them, which could get even bigger, not to mention what are they doing in aerospace? We've seen pictures of their flight units. Are they selling them yet? Are they building them yet? I left you a lot of due diligence. Yes, I did. So XERI, just for the reasons I've pointed out, I think it's hot, but I think she's gonna be even hotter when you learn more yourself. We've looked at this stock before, back in March. This is SOPA, ticker S-O-P-A, Society Pass Incorporated. We looked at it when she had already broke out over the 200 and was running hard. The very next day, she fell, and she's been falling since. Sorry about that, you never know. But now she's under the 200 with that atypical chart again, and boy, the volume has come in, and she is on fire, looking really, really good. And she's had some humongous news come out. Again, now is the time to be considering SOPA. At least I believe so. SOPA finished today at 63.5 cents roughly, and almost 5% gains. This is a penny stock on the NASDAQ, so you're gonna be able to trade this for free and you can trade it pre-market, after-market as well. No, you don't need any special qualifications or permission. Just remember, when you place your order, it's not a day trade. You gotta change that day to day plus extension or good till canceled plus extension. You gotta get extension in there or your after-market, pre-market trade won't be seen. So what is this company all about? Well, they tell us over here that Society Pass was founded in 2018 as a data-driven loyalty fintech and e-commerce ecosystem in the fast-growing markets of Vietnam, Indonesia, Philippines, Singapore, and Thailand, which account for more than 80% of the SEA population. And with offices located in Angeles, Bangkok, Ho Chi Minh City, Jakarta, Manila, and Singapore. Society Pass Incorporated is an acquisition-focused holding company operating six interconnected verticals, loyalty, digital media, travel, telecom, lifestyle, and F&B, whatever that is, which is seamlessly connects millions of registered consumers and hundreds of thousands of registered merchants and brands across multiple product and service categories throughout the SEA. SOPA has amassed more than 3.3 million registered consumers and over 650,000 registered merchants and brands. Now, their subsidiaries are in different countries and they do do different things. They work with digital video, they work with online travel agency, hotel management and payment solutions, mobile network operators, grocery delivery. They've got lots of things that they're doing and they're still growing. They're still adding to their cart more and more acquisitions and the revenues just keep getting bigger. So what was the relative volume around SOPA today? Ooh, not bad. That's up like 600%, jumping from almost 200,000 shares a day up to 1.2 million shares today. That's a good increase. Share structure for SOPA. Well, it's not bad, whatever it is. We've got an outstanding share count of roughly 28 million. I don't know what the float is, but I know it can't be more than the outstanding share count. So whatever it is, I'm content. Financials for the company. Wow, whoa, that's explosive. Look at the leaps and bounds we got going here. We gotta remember to put three zeros behind any of the numbers. So that's 10,000, jump into 52,000. That's five times her revenues. Then jump into 519,000, 
10 times her revenues. And then she did it again, jumping to 5.6 million, which is actually 1,100%. Wow, she is exploding. Right now, she's holding, she's maintaining. She was doing roughly a half a million each quarter. Now she's doing 2 million or above. So she's doing all right. But the news I'm gonna share with you, she's gonna be doing a lot better. Checking out those disclosures. All right, I did go through these 8Ks and there's one we need to take a look at. They received a notice from the NASDAQ. You see this one coming, don't you? They have been underneath a dollar for too long. How long is too long? Well, they said 30 days, 30 days. See on the NASDAQ, the New York Stock Exchange, you can't go under a dollar for too long or they'll yank you off of the major exchange and throw you down to the OTC. But normally it's six months you gotta be under a dollar. This one was only 30 days. It is what it is. And they've got till November 21st, 2023 to get it up over a dollar for 10 consecutive days. They have to close over a dollar for 10 consecutive days. Then they're out of hot water. Everything is kosher. And if they go back under a dollar, they just start it all over again. So that's everything we got over here. Let's go check out that news. Now, because this chart is so red hot, we really don't have to go searching for some big catalyst. Even a stale catalyst is probably gonna move this chart. So what I'm looking for here is continued momentum. They've been doing a lot. They've got lots of subsidiaries. Each one's are doing stuff and they've done more. Here recently, they've acquired two more companies. We got a news press in May and one in July. The one that came out in May, they tell us that the company announces their acquisition of KneeWave. This is the go-to advertising platform for nano and micro influencers with under 100,000 followers. <laughs> That's me. This is for the Indonesian social media scene. Kneewave's 10,000 plus influencers on its talent roster turbocharges TMG's social commerce advertising business in both Indonesia and the SEA. The other one came out July 7th. Next Gen Retail ventures out of Vietnam and enters into the Indonesian market for the first time and creates an online, offline retailer in the SCA. They are purchasing PT Nintendo Infocom. PT Nintendo Infocom acquisition will bring approximately $30 million of annual revenue to the company. Folks, that's huge. They're doing $5 million a year. This is six times that, not including their own $5 million. So what sort of business is this? Well, this is a retail store, as you can see right there, operating in Indonesia since 2010. The company employs approximately 300 employees and operates 26 Apple branded stores in nine cities across Indonesia. And we've got two more pieces of news here. They go together. We have got a buy rating from Ascendant Capital Markets they have started covering this company. And I wanna jump into this, but we're not gonna to go too deep into it. I just wanna share some of this information. This is an analyst who will look at the company unbiasedly and tell you what the company's doing, bad or good, and they give target prices. Well, we've got that here. Ascendant initiates coverage of SOPA with a buy rating and a 12-month price target of $3.50. That's our price target. Now he breaks down all the selling points of this company right here, and I'm not gonna go through them all, but it's here for you to come back and go through. But I do wanna read this one. The major acquisition, SOPA's recent acquisition on July 7th, the one we just read, they got 95% of PT Nintendo info, which will significantly contribute to SOPA's results going forward due to the $30 million revenues that this company already makes. Folks, that's the bottom line. There's your catalyst. That's what we need. We've got a hot chart, big dollars happening right now. Yes. <laughs> Let's go check out that chart. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. We are looking at Society Pass. This is ticker SOPA. This is a six-month, four-hour view. Our high bubble is back in November, just a little over two bucks. She's been falling all this time hit a low maybe three or four days ago of 46 cents. Now we looked at it back here in March. She had broken through the 200. It was nice and level, looked good. She had a couple days of run, 
We looked at her and then she fell the very next day, pretty much back to where she started from. And she's been sitting in this zone for quite a while, months. And that is about 96, 97 cents. Now she's fallen down to that low and she is bouncing off of that right now. All this volume is coming into the picture. She's crossed that 50 day SMA and then beelined it straight to the 200, put an indication spike didn't have enough strength to get up on top and it's too steep anyways. We need it flatter, but she's letting us know what she wants to do. She has fallen back, but she's right on top of the nine. Bounced on it once, bounced on it twice, looking like she wants to try again. Osculators are very strong. PPO, MACD looking nice. They're having a little bit of pullback as you would expect, but a lot of strength still sitting there. And our RSI is up at 63. 20 day, one hour view. All right, we've got some indication spikes here. We've got one real big one right here, still too steep to get on top, but she came back down. Now what I look for is a spike to break through the 200 and when it falls back, as I expect it to, it just comes back to normal. It doesn't lose any strength. That's why I call it an indicator. Then she came down here, hit this low, there's another indicator and here it is. Once it got flat, she took off. She came out from underneath everything, crossed that 50, beelined it to the 200, and she took off. She has had a pullback today, but she's bouncing off of the 20-day SMA. Not way down here on the 50. Speaking of the 50, look, she just crossed the 200-day SMA. That's a golden cross. That's worth watching this stock tomorrow. We've also got the 200-day haul crossing the 200-day SMA. 200 day hauls like the 200 day SMA. You take 200 days of prices, average them together, and then give more credence to the current prices. And that's your 200 day haul. Osculators, they're showing more pullback right now. Looks like she fell most of the day. She had a long climb here. She was getting far away from everything. She's just balancing off right now as far as I'm concerned. All of our uh, technicals are a bit cool on the one hour. Looking at our five day, five minute. So she was under the 200 back here at 46 cents, broke through it and she's been negotiating with it for a couple days. Won the negotiations and pounced off of that 200 up onto the 50. She keeps bouncing off of that 50. Now she's back to the 200, but notice she isn't coming underneath it. She doesn't look like she wants to crash. She's just repositioning herself for another run. I'm liking what she's doing. My only concern here is we've got all these SMAs, the 20, the 50, and the 200, pushing down towards the 200. That's not a good thing. That could make this go up underneath the 200, but hopefully, like a rubber ball, it'll come back to the surface and float up there before she takes off again. Technicals are a bit, uh, well, they're recovering right now. I was going to say they were weak, but look. Our PPO is just about ready to cross over to Pink Line. We just had a crossover on our MACD. RSI is very cool, but we're talking about a huge deal here, a lot of money, and the volume is picking up. You got to give the stock a chance to bounce every now and then, and that is a perfect bounce right there, folks. I'm liking what I'm seeing. Do some more due diligence. See if you like it, but I like SOPA. Last stock we're looking at comes from the OTC markets. This is UME World, ticker U-M-E-W-F. Now, honestly, I don't have a whole heck of a lot of information to share with you. There's not a lot here, but what I've got is hot. First off, her chart. It's been in an uptrend since May. Looks sweet. The problem is it doesn't trade as often as we would like to see, and there's not a lot of volume. Not yet. They just had big news come out May 30th. I know it sounds old, but it's not. It's about a huge deal they just made. But more importantly, they talk about the shareholder value that we're going to get from this deal and they're talking about it in dollars and cents. That's what caught my attention and that's why I'm sharing it with you now. So you, me, WF, she finished today at 44 cents with almost 5% gains. She's on the pink tier, but she's only got one of those precious green ticks we're always talking about, the verified transfer agent, which is good. But where's the verified profile? We would like to see that. Surprisingly, she's got independent directors. Remember, you only need these if you're going to uplist. So, and she is a shell risk. Not good, right? She's in business, but she's not making any money. 
which makes the news we're going to look at even more important. So what does You Me World do? Well, I'm going to bypass this description for one that's easier to read. We are an integrated edible oil company. We are building a vertically integrated midstream refining and value-added downstream business that makes us an integral supplier of food, feed, oleochemicals, and renewable fuel needs across a variety of industries. So what was the relative volume around the company without any fresh catalysts? Well, it is a big jump. That's like 11 times their normal volume, going from 860 shares, that's under the radar, to 10,000 shares. That nice even number tells me that was probably one purchase today. But I think that's just the start of something big. Looking at the share structure for the company, we've got about 112 million outstanding. Looks like the insiders could be owning about 78 million of those which would leave about 34 million in the float. And I can live with that. Financials for the company are zip. They don't have anything annually. They don't have anything quarterly, which is why this news is hot. And disclosures. We really don't have anything here to consider. The most recent SEC filing came out in April. So let's jump on into that one piece of news. Well, this is gonna be quick and simple. They've only got one news press that came out May 30th, and it's big news. Not only do they tell us about their change of operations and what they're going to be doing, but how it's going to affect the price of the stock. So they tell us in this news press that You Me World Limited has signed a binding letter of intent to purchase three palm oil mills, totaling 240 to 300 tons per hour production capacity, oh my God, in three separate locations in Malaysia. This represents nearly 2 million metric tons of fresh fruit bunches production capacity, with roughly 6,000 metric tons per year. Current market value of this capacity is $600 million revenue per year, or about $5.40 a share. The company will issue convertible preferred equity of $90 million, which is convertible at a floor price of $4 per share. This will aid the company enormously as it will seek to uplist the company at a national exchange. The company is also purchasing with these plants the leading ESG machinery technology for palm oil refinery productions. So they've made a huge purchase here and they say just this purchase alone has made the stock worth $4. And with the production going into gear, it should be worth $5.40 a share. And they're going to be making money. You're talking about a shell risk company here that's in trouble. So this is good all the way around. Why shouldn't the chart start moving? Let's go take a look at it. We are now taking a look at that stock, UMEWF, UME World. Now this is a very pretty chart and it's a very interesting chart. It's just real light. Would you believe that is a six month, four hour view? I know it looks more like a 20 day, one hour view. So we've got a low bubble back here in December of 12 and a half cents, and we hit a high today of 48 cents. That is virtually a 400% run. Now she didn't start moving until May 2nd, right here. But the news didn't come out until May 30th. There was no other news. There was no other filings. There was no other catalyst. Why did she jump from 13 cents to 28 cents through these days? Insiders? People who knew something was going on, that's the only guess I got. News came out here and she has continued climbing. She's floating on her nine day SMA, hit her high of 48 cents and she's pulled back to 44 cents. Now that doesn't bother me. That has settled right in the middle of this big bar. Just like this one settled right in the middle. This one settled right in the middle. As long as they stay in the middle or above, I'm confident there is a likelihood she's gonna continue going up. This looks good to me. Oscillators, they are still showing a lot of strength. RSI is still on fire in the overbought arena. However, everything is turning down just a little bit right now. 20 day, one hour view. Low here of 35 cents, above the nine day SMA, floating on it, looking good. Not much more to say except all the oscillators are still hot. Five day, five minute, so we jumped from 42 cents to 48 cents, 
fell back down to 44 cents. She's just kind of staying in this region and all of our oscillators are just kind of planed out right now. We haven't had a lot of volume. I think we had one purchase today. We're not getting a lot of trading and that news is old, which means we're probably due for another piece of news, wouldn't you think? And when that one comes out, it's probably gonna even be juicier than the one we just read. So look, you may not wanna get into this tomorrow, but I think you need to put you, me, WF on your watch list. And when you see volume, you may want to consider getting in. Let me ask you a question. Are you practicing doing your due diligence looking for charts that have heat? I mean, it's really easy to do. Honestly, you could do this while watching a movie. It's not like reading text, you're just looking at charts. You're looking for that breakout of the price going over a strong SMA or a bounce off of a strong SMA. It's really easy to visually see it while you're watching a movie. So practice, find some hot charts, take note of them. I'm not saying invest, take note of them, write them down, watch them for the next couple of days, see if they take gains. See if you've got the knack for finding charts that have heat. You may not need me. Did I just say that? <laughs> Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.